questions? Yes? Um, I was just, I was wondering if you're uh, familiar with how the Australians might, if they, if they support Aboriginal programming or, or if the New Zealanders support Maori programming. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, while I was in Australia, I was a terrific uh, program, uh, Bush Mechanics. Mm -hmm. Reminded me when we were up hunting and you had to break down, you tied up and you still get home. <laughs> it's a program that, uh, that I really liked. I really had that. Uh, Protein, the American Lion Protein that went to Cuba. And I saw that one and I really loved it. If there is a, a comparison, it would seem that the support for Maori programming is directly reinforced by exhibition and pretty wide distribution within Australia through SBS and other sources. And that's still, there's a disconnect in the Canadian system. Hello, my name is Melanie, and um, thank you for a wonderful film, and thanks for coming. And I work here as a storyteller, and I, I have a number of questions in my mind about uh, storytelling as the oral art form that it started out as, that I found beautiful in the film. I felt like you were very close to what I imagined as storytelling. And I have a story that's in my mind and that I read in a book. But I know there's many different stories in the far north and that the communities would have stories. This is about a woman who is proud and she finally gets herself married to two men who take her away and throw her away into the sea. And she goes down to the bottom and becomes nothing but bones. And somehow, and I don't know all the details, she finds a man to play a drum to bring her back to herself. And then she plays a drum and brings him back out of his old age. And are any of those details familiar to you? Or is this a story that would come from some other part of the, the far north or anything at all? Or if this is of no interest to you, I'd also... <laughs> I'd love to hear of any stories that are calling to you that you might approach through your film work. So there you go. Thank you. Yeah, I knew, knew some story like that uh, about uh, Setna, uh, sea goddess, uh, where the shamans used to uh, go and comb her hair because the, the story goes uh, uh, she was uh, married to a whale, living on an island. She, she was homesick and his father came and started to take her back and this whale hung out and he was in a rush. And because they, usually uh, animals have bones. Uh, what do you, I don't know what they call this. Uh, not the lips, but, yeah, but he forgot his turn, and that's what uh, the story goes in, and started to attack uh, the boat, and, and his old man would uh, throw him off, and she would hang on to the boat, and uh, he would cut her fingers, so she, as she's drowning every of her, Fingers became sea mammals, <coughs> and she lives at the bottom of the, the sea, and she does she can't comb her hair, and and shamans used to uh, uh, go and comb her hair, so she would release some seals, uh, some some story like that, yeah, but something like that. I don't really have a question.
question also um, over here. <coughs> On the right. Grace, um, I'm wondering how threatened your language is in your community there. Is it passed along to the children? Do most people speak it there in the community? How many people are bilingual and multilingual? Uh, in my community, um, Inuit is the first language. Uh, at home, at work, uh, everybody speaks Inuit. Uh, even uh, when we send our children to school, for three years, they all learned in you know, how to speak it, how to write it. Uh, while it was here, they started to learn English. And that way, um, we think that uh, we captured them first, so they never forget. Congratulations on a marvelous film, and it is a Canadian classic. And thank you for coming down to see us and speak to us. Uh, I am very curious. You, you did a, such a wonderful film in your community uh, with great obstacles, uh, with Belgium opposing you and every other agency opposing you. I'm wondering, are other communities, uh, are there other film efforts being made? and to tell stories in other communities in the north, across the north, uh, <coughs> or is your uh, company a pretty isolated venture, or, and, and are in other isolated areas, are those stories of their community just going to disappear? Or have you heard of other feature length dramatic films being made, or are you pretty well on your own? Well, pretty well on your own. You see, you see these uh, agencies such as Telefilm and the, the need for distribution, such as Catherine was talking about, are almost obstacles to our collective content or our collective memory. Uh, there are obstacles that are going to really uh, erase memory unless people like yourself can, can uh, invigorate production across the north and, and rescue language and story in, in, you know, in, in more communities than, than just your own. Well, um, we're, we're the only one in our community and other settlements, they don't have any. Uh, they, they have uh, their way of um, collecting these stories. Um, to answer your second question, uh, we gotta learn uh, this system, how it works. Uh, but uh, we have to, we have to really learn how this system works. Uh, and that's how it is. I mean, there's no other way. Um, I don't think it's gonna get easier. So we might as well learn it. No. Uh, that's my only solution. I think we have time for a few final questions. I believe there's a gentleman in the house. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't see you. Hi. I saw your film when I was in the United States, and the Americans around me were stunned and silent and many people were crying. And looking at the film, I felt that it was like home. I'm wondering when this film was shown to other people that are indigenous to our Arctic and other Arctic regions. You mentioned Russia, you mentioned Norway. What did they see? when they saw your film? How did they respond? Did they say? Could you share that with us? I, I haven't found to do that yet. Uh, every 
will each of this um, it has the same response. Uh, audience coming out there, shake, they want to shake your hand, they want to thank you for making it. Uh, everywhere we took it, it's the same. I believe we have time for one or two more questions. Gentlemen at the back. Yes, sir. First, I uh, want to congratulate you on your film. Thank you very much. It's an honor to uh, see it. An honor to be here with you. Um, the question I have, um, uh, forgive me, I, I write late. I've been packing for Holland all day. <laughs> but uh, I was just wondering um, if this question had not been asked. Have you considered uh, telling a story uh, set more in the modern era? Um, by that, I mean, that any, I, I guess, Anytime up until the adoption of uh, If you're working on anything like that, if anything has been done, um, and what sort of challenges do you think you would meet dealing with the modern day issues as opposed to uh, issues of the of story in the past? <laughs> Sometimes I'm really, I don't really understand. I watch TV in English and was uh, listen to radio in English at the same time. No problem, sometimes I'm trouble understanding. Um, are you shooting something in modern time? The story of modern shamanism and Christianity is coming up to the present. Yeah, yes. Yes. So current work uh, Mr. Koenig is working on um, in shamanism and Christianity does have a historical sweep right up to modern times. I should also note that his son is trying to get the funding for a documentary for about young Inuit people and their experiences currently in the North. And so it's a family thing. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of young people are uh, telling themselves that there's no hope, and that uh, they should realize that uh, when you commit suicide, there's such a place that. Uh, where they all go. And I've heard that they're very thirsty, uh, still have their throats cut out, or they hang themselves, they still have that. They're like in the zombie land. Uh, well, we want to get the message across that before you kill, kill yourself, uh, where you go, there's, there's no other. Yes, there's any belief in three stages and uh, below, middle, and above. Uh, and the, the middle is the, the zombie there. Okay. I believe, okay, one last question. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Minta, and I want to congratulate you on such a wonderful film. In the way you are, you are well down here. Um, my question is, uh, will you update your website so we can keep in touch with your projects uh, so we don't miss any? You know, wherever you are in the world, we can we know what to look for. Um, because I can't wait for your <laughs> We try to, and we have uh, a uh, very talented uh, uh, worker named Katrina, and she tries to keep uh, our website updated. Well, Zachary, I would like to thank you so very much. Thank you. I would also like to encourage you, um, some of you who have been talking about uh, the isolation of your work, uh, the difficulties in finding an authentic storytelling voice in what is an extremely hostile commercial world. Uh, that, that feeling was very much shared by a number of filmmakers who have gathered with Zacharias. There are very few points of hope on the horizon, but uh, there are some. And I think we need to continue to lobby. Uh, we need to lobby for public money, public funds, uh, supporting 
artists with tremendous vision like Zacharias, we also need to insist our public agencies like the CBC play a dynamic role in film in this country, bringing film to us. And I would encourage you to repeat these messages to our minister, Sheila Copps, repeatedly in the coming months prior to the leadership campaign. <laughs> I would like to thank you all very much.